Whether you're a seller of a home or you're an agent looking to understand how to successfully host an open house, you're going to want to watch this video because we've got five important tips to help you navigate through a successful open house. So Hector, maybe you can tell them a little bit about how many signs you want to put out for an open house and when you might want to think about start marketing for your open house. Great questions, actually. So the, the key is to make sure that the public knows. It's very challenging if you post an open house the night before because people may not necessarily see it, but if you start at least three days ahead of time, that's gonna give you at least enough of an opportunity to get the marketing out there. You may wanna put door hangers on some of the doors, meet some of the neighbors to make sure that whether they have friends or family who might be interested in that community, you can get them in there, or maybe that particular seller may be looking to sell their home as well, and, and they wanna get an ID and also meet an agent who's familiar with the process. Now, as far as how many signs, research suggests that at least eight signs is the ideal amount, and you wanna carefully place those signs all the way from a main road to the actual house itself. And would you recommend maybe attaching anything to the sign, or just the sign itself, or anything that you can use to sort of draw the eyes in? Great question. On any main roads in particular, you wanna have at least two balloons per sign, and you wanna fill those balloons with helium because the helium keeps the balloons up as much as possible. So you're gonna to wanna to get nice fresh balloons because a regular balloon is actually going to deflate rather quickly. So you wanna get the balloons just before the open house. Very good. And when they actually get to your open house and you have people coming in the door and they start asking you questions, what kind of information do you want to tell these potential clients about the house? Do you wanna rattle off everything there is to know about the house or do you wanna choose a few things? So normally we do not want to overwhelm the consumer. We wanna introduce ourselves and you wanna give them three main facts. Is the roof new? Is the air conditioner new? Did they just repaint the home? Does the lot sit on a special conservation or waterfront lot? So give them three simple facts and then really understand what they know about the, the area. Are they new to the area? Are, are they pretty familiar with the area? Do they live in the neighborhood? So these are all things to help you navigate during that conversation and really get them engaged but not overwhelm the consumer. Okay. Good tips. And what would you recommend? So every client that comes in is not somebody that's always going to want to immediately make an offer. Everyone has questions. Everyone has concerns. So for a potential client that voices some objections with the property, how would you handle that? How would you uh, want to address those? That's situations? a great question. So I've had the feedback in the past where someone may not necessarily like the carpet that's upstairs. So the question that I will pose to that consumer, if they really do like the house, is if we can get the floors replaced, let's say with a nice luxury vinyl or you know, maybe a laminate flooring upstairs, would you move forward on the home? And if the answer is yes, then we can look at color selections. Okay. And the sellers are typically, uh, they're typically open to hearing those types of ideas to help sell their home? Absolutely. Sell sellers are, I mean, they want to sell the property. If we have a willing and able buyer in front of us, we don't want to lose that willing and able buyer. We want to do whatever we can to make the deal work so that all parties are, are, are both satisfied and, um, and, and basically get it through to whatever the next step is. Maybe the seller of the property already bought a property, now they've got two mortgage payments. He has to maybe put out a little bit of money to get some new floors in, but I would be very strategic in that and wait until the appraisal has been completed before you begin the installation. That makes sense. Thanks for that also. And I had one last question. What are sort of some of the extra things, intangibles that you can do to help uh, capture a potential client's attention and um, help to, you know, really help them to connect with the property? So one of the things that we like to do is either have a nice candle, vanilla is always a popular scent, or, you know, maybe you bring in some nice baked cookies. I, I would be a little bit cautious of turning on someone's oven just to be on the safe side. Those are some things that will get people to remember the home and then, of course, remember you. Makes sense. Great tip. Thank you, Hector. So if you're interested in more tips, whether you're a seller, buyer, agent, whatever, make sure you tune in, like, subscribe, comment, anything that you want to learn about, we'd be happy to help. We've got tons of industry experience, both on the lending side and the real estate side. And we just want to help you navigate through either the sale or purchase of your next home. If you'd like more information, you can always reach us by call or text at the numbers below. Thank you for watching Yellow Church Chat. We'll see you next week.